Let's bring back in Mike Vicara, our, uh, the bureau chief uh, here in Washington for News Nation, Niall Stanage with our friends over at The Hill, and Ian Swanson, the managing editor of The Hill. Ian, Vic, you've been hanging with us. Niall, welcome to the show. Uh, you've been watching as we have. So let's start with you. Um, what happens next, Niall? I'm not sure we're any closer to ending this thing uh, than we were two weeks ago. No, and I'm not sure anybody knows exactly what happens next. My working assumption is that Jim Jordan will put the screws to these people who have voted for other candidates, see if he can move the vote a little bit. He doesn't have to necessarily win on the next vote, but I think what he wants to do is show momentum toward that magic number 217. Now, I would say as a cautionary note, the number voting for other people is higher than Jordan allies anticipated. Uh, Chip Roy, for example, the congressman from Texas, was estimating earlier on today eight to 10 defectors. So the fact that it's significantly higher than that will, I think, worry Jim Jordan's allies quite a lot. Right, and so if he needs to get to 217 and there's 20 others, uh, Vic and Ian, how does he, pe he essentially needs, correct me if I'm wrong, 17 of those 20 to come to his side, right, Vic? Well, that's right. Uh, he got exactly 200 votes. He needs 217, assuming that all the sitting members of the House, 40, 433 of them, uh, there was one that did not vote today, sh show up and actually vote. I mean, let's talk about what's at stake here. As we look at the House of Representatives in an empty chamber, and as I think as you aptly point out, Blake, uh, very symbolic of exactly what's happening in the United States Congress now, and that's nothing. The House remains in limbo. The House remains paralyzed. While Republicans, in the face, again, of a solid wall of Democratic opposition, 212 votes for Hakeem Jeffries. There are 212 Democrats in the House, not one breaking ranks. Uh, but we do expect the Biden administration to come to Congress with a request for billions of dollars, two, three billion dollars. It's all speculation at this point uh, for Israel in their time of crisis. There's also the question of Ukraine. Obviously, a lot of opposition on the Republican side, including uh, from Jim Jordan, but money uh, request coming from the Biden administration soon. Not to mention all of the day-to-day -day business that goes on in Congress now at a standstill. Uh, we had some protest votes. I think it's fair to say that. But going, uh, whittling 17 down to four, and four is the maximum number that Republicans can lose, Jim Jordan can lose, uh, and still become speaker in the face of that solid wall of Democratic opposition, that's going to be a tall order. And one more time, let's say it, all politics is local. A lot of those voting against Jim Jordan for Steve Scalise, Kevin McCarthy, or what other, other random members of Congress were, uh, attracted votes, and there were a few uh, unusual ones today, uh, many of these people are from swing districts, those districts that you've been talking about over the course of the afternoon, Blake, that did go to Joe Biden. Uh, these members, uh, very knife's edge, narrow voting majorities in their district, won by very narrow majorities, very concerned about the perception of a Trump, a Donald Trump ally, and Jim Jordan endorsed pu very publicly twice yeah. in the last 24 hours by, by Donald Trump, very wary of having a Donald Trump ally you know, in the speaker's chair. You know, Ian, as we look at this, at live pictures of the House floor right now, and, and basically, I don't know, 90% of it empty on day 14 of really not knowing where Republicans go next. I, I sit here and I wonder, Ian, at what point do you feel that in towns and cities all across this country, people say, what are they doing? And then it starts to show up in a way that could actually harm Republicans? Or will it never get to that point? I, I mean, I assume that people are already wondering, you know, what are they doing, right? That, that, that probably happened last week or the week before or earlier this year or in January. Uh, whether it actually, you know, determines something at the ballot box is, is uh, another question. We live in a really polarized time. Uh, there's a very thin uh, part of the electorate that is actually willing to go back and forth between Republicans and Democrats. Uh, it's, it's become very tribal. It's become very tribal in, in the House. But certainly the, the expression that the Congress is sending right now, right now is not one of, of something that, that works well. It doesn't speak highly of our system of government. And I would assume allies around the world are looking at this and shaking their heads. And enemies of the U.S. are probably pretty happy about it.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.